It's January transfer window time and I do have big plans. Although I, I did have big plans. So we started here on the finance screen and as you can see, Birmingham are absolutely draining money out of this club every single month. We are losing money. We are now at a minus 650k balance. Our transfer budget's only at £400,000. The board have reduced my transfer revenue made available to 30% and we are currently only around 11000 or so out of the wage budget. So we don't have a huge transfer or wage budget. Now we can try and improve that through player sales. Obviously only 30% of it will be coming back to ourselves, but maybe that's all we need. And with Birmingham, obviously we're going to be here for a couple of seasons. We need to fix the financial situation and what, when better to start now. So we have already ticked over to the start of the January transfer window. Now some things have happened already. Bellingham has drawn interest from Brighton and Hove Albion. He has been valued, at least by the media, at around £25 million. I would not be selling at £25 million. He's obviously only 19 years old, one of the best wonder kids on the game. He is going to be my future, so I'm hoping um, he will stick around, at least for the time being. He's only got a year and six months left on his deal. That is something I will have to rectify at some point, um, but hopefully we can get that all done this month. We have made two offers for two new strikers, and by new, I mean old. Rian Brewster, he is currently six months away from the end of his contract, but as he is an English player, we cannot actually approach to sign him. So we have approached to loan him. Liverpool have accepted the offer, but unfortunately for us, Crystal Palace and Norwich have both went in for permanent bids. So it's probably likely that Rian Brewster won't join the club and he will go to either Palace or Norwich. But we threw our hat into the ring just in case he fancies a loan move instead. But I'm not really that bothered as we have made an offer for Sebastiano Esposito. We've had it accepted, a loan offer from Inter Milan. If he is to come back, I have no doubt he will be an absolute sensation in the championship once again. We have already had him at Barnsley. We already know he's capable of absolutely banging in the goals at the championship level. 32 goals and 41 games for us with Barnsley. Didn't really get much game time for uh, Inter Milan last season, so he is sort of around the same level as he was whilst he was at Barnsley. And getting him back in will be a massive, massive boost to our chances of potentially competing for the playoffs this season. Just a quick reminder as to where we are in the league. We currently sit in 17th position on 29 points. That puts us 9 points clear from Sunderland in 22nd. But we are 10 points off Derby in 6th. And I'll not lie to you, my eyes are set on that. That's going to be our target for this season. Although we might fail, we might not be able to reach it. 10 points is not an insurmountable gap. And with 22 games remaining, if we are to go on an excellent run of form, you never know, we could be in and around challenging with some smart signings this summer, this transfer window. So if this is your first time in a January transfer window episode, we will be playing all of these games. You won't be seeing them live, of course. You will be just be seeing the results and the goal scorers and stuff. But um, obviously a long way away yet, but there's a lot of football manager to be played. And hopefully we can sell some players mainly. That's the first starting point. We need to sell to be able to buy. And straight away we have an offer for Fran Villalba. He is our starting attacking midfielder. He's not that great, to be quite honest with you. At 24 years old, he does have a little bit of room to grow. But on 20k per week, he's one of our highest earners. And £10.5 million up front would give us around £3 million to play with, which we could sign three or four players who would get into our first lem for that sort of money, particularly if we're looking at the loan market. Wigan have also made a Gary Gardner off a 400k. Um, we would have to pay 1.4k of his wages for the remainder of his contract, but he is on 7.5, so it would be a 6k saving in terms of the wage budget. And although he won't say quite a lot of that £400,000, getting him off the wage bill is primary target number one. Our head of youth development has accepted a couple of offers for one of our youngsters, uh, Ron Rowett. He is an Irish left back, and although he's got a little bit of decent potential to be able to grow, and it's not a great deal of money we would be getting. I'm more than happy for him to leave the club and just boost our finances that little bit more. Obviously, we're not going to be staying at Birmingham forever, so we're not going to be able to develop these sort of players who are not ready for first-team action right now. And this was the main reason why I came back. Brentford are in offer for Ivan Sunjic. Now, the issue we've got with Ivan Sunjic compared to the rest of them is that he's an absolutely fantastic player. A player who, if I was to sell, I probably would not be able to get a better player. 
in his place. But at the same time, I like to play a defensive, a deep line playmaker in defensive midfield. And if you're to take a look, although he's got good attributes to that role, he doesn't actually like playing that. So it's going to have to be something I think about. Maybe I offer him to all the clubs to try and get as much money as possible. But um, yeah, we'll we'll think about this one. So I've negotiated an £11.5 million deal for Ivan Sunjic. And whilst it's not as much as I was hoping for, he has a year and a half left on his deal. We'll get around £3 million into the transfer kit. And as I've said, with the Fran Valalba deal, we could probably do a little bit of something special with £3 million in our current position. It brings some money into the club. While our finances are terrible, it lowers our wage budget. I think, I think I'm going to have to let him go. Now, with Fran Villalba likely leaving the club and joining um, Fulham for a £10.5 million fee, I'm looking at this boy. He's available for loan. I've put in the offer. I don't quite have him scouted yet, but he looks absolutely unbelievable at 18 years old. And if we compare him to Fran Villalba, I mean, he is just a better player, straight up. He's getting eight grand per week off us. We're saving 12k per that, of that from the Fran Villalba wages that we'll be losing. And we're getting a better player. Absolute no-brainer to me. Hopefully, he will accept the deal. Another one I'm going to be making a loan offer for is Oriel Busquets from Barcelona B. He's an absolutely fantastic deep-lying playmaker in that defensive midfield role. Uh, pretty similar to Sunjic in some aspects, but a bit different in others as well. Um, he's definitely a lot more competent and capable in that deep-lying playmaker role, whereas Sunjic is probably the better player overall. But to be able to get this boy in for loan for the rest of the season would be absolutely delightful we can't offer him any wages right now and um, we'll have to wait until some players sell and we can then uh, boost our wage budget a little bit he is available for a free towards the end of the season but he is not interested in joining me on a permanent transfer but he is slightly interested in a loan move so we're going to be making that move four star current four and a half star potential it would be a bit of a nice thing i think one deal that was agreed before the January transfer window opened was Kiki Abaje's joined Tenerife for 350k and 4.2k per week in the wages. He was just a winger who absolutely got no game time under me whatsoever. Uh, and by no, I mean 11 games. <laughs> I think that was before I came into power though. So he's left the club and it looks like we will be confirming the signing of Thomas Mazamiru who will come into the squad and be our first choice attack midfielder even before Fran Villalba has left the club. Um, Ron Rowett, another offer accepted from Nottingham Forest. Everyone and his dogs going in for Rian Brewster now, so I don't think we are going to be able to complete the deal before he joins one of these other clubs, unfortunately. But nobody else is coming for Esposito, which is the main signing of this January transfer window. Our first game, though, is coming up though against uh, Swansea City at home. I'll quickly play them and show you the result. Open oh, before that, Gary Gardner is joining Wigan for 400k. See you later, Gary. So we've just played Swansea City and ended up getting ourselves what was in the end a comfortable 2-0 win. Adam Armstrong in the 80th minute from the penalty spot and Jeremy Bella in the 80th minute coming off the bench and getting himself a goal as well. It was pretty neck and neck all game as we played our former man Miko Albanos, who of course we had at Barnsley FC. Let's move on though and get to the rest of the window. Our first exit of the window, Ivan Sunjic, our first major exit, should I say. £11.5 million, he is going to join Brentford. Good luck to him, he's a fantastic player. And to be honest with you, we're probably not going to be able to sign someone even better. But he's went and joined Brentford for 11 and a half. Brentford are in League One. They are first in League One and they can afford £11.5 million for a championship player. Um... Yeah, they are definitely getting promoted. Unbelievable. Dynamo do get 25% of the fee, which is £2.9 million. So where does that leave us financially? That put, puts us on an £8.5 million balance with £3 million available in the transfer budget now. We can make now make that offer for Oriel Busquets on loan for the rest of the season. And top priorities for me now, goalkeeper and left back. That is provided we can sign Busquets. So we've just played 6th place, Huddersfield Town away from home and unfortunately got beat this time. Lewis O'Brien getting the goal in the 20th minute to put them 1-0 in front and that is how it finished. Disappointing. Our next outgoing is Fran Villalba, £10.5 million from Fulham. We will say goodbye to him. He was a decent player for us and played okay but with Mazamiru now coming in on loan, I think we have upgraded. Fran Villalba, uh, what? <laughs> oh, shit. 
mistakes were made. Valencia gets seventy five percent of the agreed transfer fee. Valencia get eight million of that. We are only getting two and a half, of which we are only getting thirty percent. So you're talking seven hundred k coming towards us into the transfer budget. I mean, we've still saved quite a bit of money available through the wage but through the wage bill, and we did have to reduce that to stop Birmingham um, leaking money. But uh, I could have done with that ten and a half million. Enjoy that eight million, Valencia. Oh dear. Now the big signing, Sebastiano Esposito will join us for the rest of the season on loan. We have had to pay a monthly fee of 40k per month, which is absolutely nothing for this boy. He's on about 10 grand per week as well. He'll be playing pretty much every game, so we'll be paying no more than that. And he joins the club. He will be our number one striker. Hopefully he'll be able to fire us up the league. He's a four and a half star, five star player for our squad. Absolutely fantastic. Another big signing in my book. Oriel Busquets will be joining us for the rest of the season. His contract is running out towards the back end of the season as well. So maybe he'll be interested in discussing a deal then. But on 16k per week with us, which is pretty big to be quite frank. And not something I was particularly keen on. But with £3.7 million left, 32k is still available in the wages. We have replaced our two major sales, which were of course Fran Villalba and Ivan Sunic. We've replaced them with Oriel Busquets and Mazamiru, both on loans, which I think is absolutely huge. We've also signed Ori uh, Sebastiano Esposito as well, which is obviously an upgrade. Um, and with three and a half million pounds left to get, potentially a goalkeeper and potentially a left back, maybe even a centre back if we can push to it. We're doing well. We're doing okay. But I mean, can I turn down Felix Correa? He's a right winger currently at Manchester City. He will join us on loan. He is um, on our loan list, the 115k per week. And he would be a pretty nice upgrade on Jeremy Bella. We're going to make that off. <laughs> we, we need a left back and a goalkeeper. So I've went for a right midfielder. Just compare him to Jeremy Bella here. And to be quite frank, there is no contest. Felix Correa is a much, much, much better player. And he will be a big upgrade on our squad should he join the club. It does eat into our wage budget. We are going to boost that up just a little um sacrifice some of the wages and maybe even ian Clark calvert i haven't showed you him before but he is absolutely fantastic but we do play an inverted winger on that side and he's a left footed only player but he is someone to keep an eye out for the future definitely so inaki pena could be our next signing he's not brilliant by any stretch of the imagination but if we just compare him to our number one right now which is Ray boyd and we go to attributes he is just a cut above in pretty much every single aspect. He will be available for around 100 to 155,000 pounds with not unreasonable wage budgets. And that would probably remain our loan out Ray Boyd for the rest of the season to try and get him first team football. But he is definitely an upgrade. He is available on a free transfer. Um, and he will he is willing to talk to me. But I kind of want him now. So for the sake of 100 or 150k, I think we're going to go for it. He is just a cheat code. <laughs> Esposito scores four goals on his debut in a 4-0 home win against Nottingham Forest. He is a beautiful man. A very tough game against bottom of the table Rotherham. They went 1-0 up through Flammarion in the 22nd minute. But Esposito equalised in the 50th. Ryan Burke got a penalty in the 78th. And we managed to get away with three points. Left back, potentially incoming Zlatan Sahevich from Partizan Belgrade. 22 years old, very, very well-rounded. He's not a massive upgrade from Ryan Burke, who's currently occupying that left back spot. But we do lack a lot of depth in that position. So at 625k for a player of that calibre, I think it's not too bad. He would probably come in and be first choice. They're both 22 years old, both similar sort of levels. But um, I've been looking for quite a while and he's the closest thing we're going to get, I think. For a reasonable fee, anyway. And we have our new left-back incoming Zlatan Sehevich. Welcome to Birmingham City. Confirmed for £625,000. He will be, hopefully be available for the next game. And he will probably end up jumping into that first-team spot. Next new incoming, Felix Correa from Manchester City. The right winger who will be coming in and occupying that first. This has been quite a productive January transfer window. We have transformed our squad quite a bit. And getting a player like of this quality in for the rest of this season is absolutely huge. He will be playing on the winger on that right-hand side. And uh, our first game today is a huge test for us. QPR currently sitting in fifth position in the playoffs, away from home. 
Let's see if our new signings can get us a win today. Yes, they can. I'm starting to feel the floor with this Burnham City side. We go away to QPR sitting in fifth place in the league and get ourselves a win. Callum Robinson with the first goal in the 22nd minute. Esposito doubling our lead in the 28th. Matteo Garras scoring the 75th for QPR and making it a bit nervy, but we got the win. Massive result. Maybe our final sign of the January transfer window. Inaki Pena comes in from Barcelona B. Two signings from them this summer, uh, this January transfer window, sorry. And he comes in as our first choice goalkeeper. Now, as I said, when we were looking at him, he's not a huge upgrade on Ray Boyd. But he is an upgrade. And that is important as Ray Boyd. Whilst he's young and he's English, he's not exactly the best player in the world. So, Anaki Pena comes in and will probably take his spot. Ray Boyd will probably now leave the club on loan for the rest of the season. If I can find someone who will offer him first team football. We'll probably say goodbye to Keefton Bell, our 32-year-old Dutch defensive midfielder. He's on 18.5k per week, and whilst we can't really get a transfer bid in from right now, Real Salt Lake and San Jose have come in to pay the rest of his wages for the rest of their season. So 18.5k uh, per week off the wage bill is big for us. Leicester have come in for one of my very talented youngsters and made a non-negotiable offer that could eventually arrive to 11 million and it has been accepted by my head of youth development now while he's, he's very good don't get me wrong this is a player who i would never sell if i was here for the longer term um 11 million pounds potentially rising to it's an offer that is pretty much too good to turn down so see you later steve creswell and we will take the money we're boosting the overall balance we've still got two million pounds left in the transfer kitty and um, we've also got what's that 11k per week left in the wages once Keefton Bell leaves and Steve Creswell leaves, that will look very healthy as we continue our look for players during this January transfer window. In terms of other positions I'm looking at, centre-half and left wing are the main ones. Um, I think it's the weakest area of our squad now without we've signed a goalkeeper and a left-back. Um, if we don't sign anybody, I'm absolutely fine with that as well. It's not at the absolute end of the world should we not be able to replace those players. But um, I'm quite happy with the strength of the squad right now. We'll see what our finances are looking at once all these deals have been completed. Another game and another win. Callum Robinson with a double this time and Felix Correa with his first goal for the club after we went 1-0 down in the fourth minute. But Sheffield Wednesday, away from home, three points. And our youngster has left to join Leicester City. Steve Creswell has joined the club for what a fee could rise to 11 million. It looks like it's about £6 million up front and that adds... <laughs> no, not a great deal of the transfer budget about a million we will take it all day we've got three million pounds left 12k per week in the wages which will be rising to another 18k whether we make any further moves during the january transfer window depends on anybody who becomes available maybe late in the window i am looking for a center half currently i think left wing is pretty much out in terms of what's available to us right now um loan market was the main area i was looking at and there's nobody really about so center half a signing for three million pounds somebody hopefully who can then push on to become a premier league center half is what ideally what i'm looking at we've got preston as our final game of the january transfer period and then we'll look to see where we are after that but there is a keifton bell leaving to join real salt lake for the rest of the season 18 and a half k per week off the wage bill we will take that all day uh, it hasn't quite updated yet there we are 22 k per week available um I don't know why it's went to 22 and not 30, but <laughs> whatever. We'll take it anyway. Still, we've massively improved the financial position of Birmingham City now. Currently in an overall balance of £12 million. Um, and that's basically been all down to player sales. So Preston up next, a few days after that, and we'll wrap up this window. Another good win, this time at home against Preston. Felix Career with the only goal of the game in the 49th minute to give us the 1-0 win. It was a dominant performance. I'm going to thoroughly deserved three points. So six wins and one defeat in this January transfer period sees us rise in the table to 10th. We are now only two points away from the playoffs. We are now no longer a mid-table side. We are in contention for this playoff push. And with the signings that we've made so far during this January transfer window, I think we are going to be in contention come the end of the season. Now, the reason why I've come back at this point is because I did want to ask if any of you are still watching right now, will you please leave a like on the video and comment with a thumbs up in the comment section. I want to see how many people actually stay around 
this long, particularly during transfer uh, episodes. The watch time is variable. It varies quite widely between um, episode to episode. So I just want to see who's still left watching. We've still got a couple of days left of the transfer window. There still could be some business on the final day. I'm still on the lookout for a centre half. Let's see if anything comes of it. What do you think of this guy? Mika Marmol is available for about £200,000 from Barcelona B. Physically, he's absolutely superb. Absolutely perfect for a centre half. He can play a left back as well for 200 k Is it a bit of business you would do? He's not necessarily better than the centre halves we are currently operating with Harley Dean being one of the major ones, but he's not that far off to be quite honest with you. And in terms of his overview here, as you can see, Mika Marmol is in the green. He is pretty special, I think, for 200 k It's not a bad bit of business. And even though I'm still going to look for another centre half, I think I'm going to bring this boy in. So Mika Marmol has agreed a deal and he is going to join the club for £205,000. That would probably be the very final bit of business we do during this transfer window. Nobody else is really sticking out to me. Marmol comes in then with a three-star current, four-and-a-half-star potential. That could very well get in our first 11. So we are already playing a three-star centre-back in our first 11. And with his potential to grow, I think he's going to be one of our starters, which... Absolutely fine by me for 200 k We have really and truly abused Barcelona to be this transfer window. Probably our final outgoing is Josh Clark, who is leaving to join Oxford for around a couple of hundred k Gets him off the wage bill. Um, and that's obviously what I'm looking for to try and reduce our um, deficit that we're currently operating in month to month. But that is probably going to be the end of today's episode and the end of our transfer business. I will take a quick look through the club vision and our finances just to see how they are sitting after everything we have managed to accomplish during this window. But let me know, how do you think I've done? Do you think I've done well? Obviously, selling Villalba and losing 75% of the fee wasn't great. But getting the wage bill down whilst also bringing in money for the club is absolutely fantastic stuff. As you can see during our manager performance at A-. Um, they are concerned with some of our selling deals, but I don't really care what they think. I am more inclined to trust my own judgment in terms of the financial side of things. As you can see, they're currently sitting on a £12.2 million overall balance. I've still got £2.7 million available in the transfer budget, but we'll save that for a rainy day. Also got £330,000 that we're spending with another 20 or so care available, should it be required. So this is going to be the end of today's video. If you have enjoyed it, please consider leaving a like. And if you are enjoying my content, get yourself subscribed. But until next time, take it easy.